What is going on, y'all? Side Perspectives Geo Fox. Now, this video here is the case around student loan debt. This is, I'm only gonna talk about student loan debt in this. So, and I'm using myself as an example, but understand there are millions of people, tens of millions of people in the United States of America, in the USA, that have student loan debt. And a lot of people, the average, as of right now, as of right now, the average student loan debt amount is roughly $30,000 average. I have $46,000 worth of student loan debt. And yet, I know people that have $100,000 and up and more of student loan debt. I know people who have less than 46,000. I know people who have less than 30,000. I know people that are at that $30,000 mark. It varies. Now, one of the big issues, in my opinion, when it comes to student loan debt, is that you always hear the argument, well, you took it out, you're responsible for making the payments. You're responsible for paying the, the loan that you took out back. And the issue with that is that in, 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 a, in a just society that I understand, yes, we took out the student loans, we took out the debt. And at the same time, um, you're talking about a lot of young folks that were 17, 18, 19, 20, early 20s who took out student loans. Let's keep it real. Do you really think a 17 year old understands how student loans work? It's a lot of predatory uh, lending because we were not well informed or educated on student loans, the interest rates, how they can compound. We weren't aware of what the economy was going to be like. Uh, in fact, a lot of us were sold a blatant lie on the importance of getting a college degree because a lot of us were told, you go to college so you can have a career. You go to college so you don't have to work at McDonald's. You go to college so you can be middle class. And that did not happen for the vast majority of us. So it's also a lot of like the predatory lending aspect of it, but then it's also literally lying to an entire generation of people about the value of the college degree. So yes, we should be responsible for paying our student loans. And here's the thing, speaking on a personal note, I've been paying my student loans since May of 2014. I've been paying on my student loans for 10 years, a decade. It makes no sense that I still am at the $46,000 mark, which brings me to my next point, interest. Interest is also accumulating. This is another reason why a lot of us owe more than what we actually borrowed. Not to mention, if your student loans are from the federal government, right? Like you, I got a Stafford loan, unsubsidized and subsidized student loans, staff, the Stafford graduate loans, uh, Pell Grant. I had scholarships. I paid out of pocket. Uh, yeah did a mixture of things to get things paid for so I could get my education that I was told that I needed so I could be middle class so I could have an opportunity to have a career and make a decent living and and obviously everyone didn't get those rewards and benefits let's just keep it real now I'm very thankful and grateful for what I have I recognize my privileges because Lord knows I am blessed, I am privileged, I don't take any of that for granted, and at the same time, I recognize this isn't right, this isn't fair, and I speak up. And I also use my privileges to help others so they can also succeed and have a better quality of life too, okay? But, so the other aspect of this, 
Number two is the economy. Nobody is really talking about that to me enough. First of all, the economy of 2010 is not the economy of 24, or 2024. I graduated high school 14 years ago, June 2010, okay? So, again, what we were told that we needed to focus on then is uh, irrelevant today. So, again, telling people to get degrees in fields that are literally obsolete a decade later is not the way to go. Case in point, you told everybody and their mama they needed to go into computers. They needed to be IT techs. They needed to be software engineers. They needed to be software developers. And guess who's getting all the layoffs now? The very people who were safe in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, those careers are no longer safe because AI. Why would we need to hire 300 software developers when we can just run AI and chat GPT and everything else? We don't need you. And those were the people that were making six plus figures a year, okay? Let's keep it real. A lot of them were making good money and guess who's laid off and struggling today? So computers is no longer a safe bet to get an education in. And this is what I mean by when we, the other, the economy. Number three, the job market and the cost of living, which is tied to the economy, which is tied to the degree. Because again, why are most of us going to college? We're not going there because we just want to hang out for four years, six years, eight years, 10 years, however long you're there. We're there because we're trying to get a degree so we can get a good paying job. So it's all tied together, you know, like seriously. The cost of living is not the same, okay? Uh, 20, I would go back to 2010 prices in a heartbeat because if I was making what I'm making now in 2010, I would actually be middle class. <laughs> but fast forward to 2024 when gas is three plus a gallon and your rent is a thousand and up a month, and your car can easily run you six, $700 a month or more to drive. And that's combining your car payment with your car insurance. I know people that are paying $1,000 to drive a car. Luckily for me, my payment is not nearly as expensive. In fact, I'm like a little under half of what they pay. I'm thankful for that. Uh, but again, why are we paying what used to be considered rent to drive a car? That's all I'm saying, right? Why are you paying $6 almost for one bag of chips? Why is $5 for a carton of eggs? Like seriously, as we got to be real, okay? It's ridiculous out here. And again, people are going to college so they can get good jobs that pay well only to find out they're not gonna get good jobs and the jobs are not paying well and you still have the student loan debt. So the other aspect of this that needs to be highlighted is it's a scam. It's largely a scam. You're selling people up Shit's Creek without a paddle, literally. You're telling people that they're gonna be making all of this money that they're never gonna see and they're never gonna make. And then they're gonna be in all of this debt without making all of this money because the idea was, okay, we're taking out a debt. We're taking out a loan. I know I'm going to have to pay this back, but that's okay because I'm going to have a decent paying job career. I'm going to be making more than enough money to be able to take care of myself, my basic needs, my family, and pay my student loans off. That's what a lot of us were under the assumption. Of course, that was the biggest crock of shit. Because again, I owe $46,000. I barely am at, I'm barely making 50K. So even if I, and then keep in mind, what you make is not what you get, right? Because you, your gross wage or your gross annual income or your gross annual salary is not what you take home. Your net pay is what you take home. Right? So, though I make $50,000 now, a little over $50,000 barely, 
I don't bring that home because you're taking 20 to 25% of my income for taxes and deductions. So that 50K looks really anywhere between 35,000 and 41, 42,000 if you're lucky, depending on how you do your taxes. But the point is, on average, you're gonna be losing at least, at least $10,000 of your income off of your gross income. I'm just being real. So you I owe 46. I make a little over 50k barely, but I'm only gonna be taking home about thirty-five thousand to forty one, forty two thousand dollars if I'm lucky. So I earn less than what I owe. So do you see the problem here? You're expecting us to pay student loans back, but you're not paying us what we're supposed to be paid with our degree, with our certifications, with our years of experience, with our skill sets. You're not paying us our worth. And then you're blaming us for not paying our student loans. Uh, we can't pay you back when we're making less than what we owe. Newsflash. Then on top of that, still have to live day to day. You still have to get food. You still have to get groceries. You still have to have paying rent or you got a mortgage. You still got to pay other, you know, your car payment, car insurance. You still, you have other bills and responsibilities. You have children, you have family members, you have loved ones. You still got to have clothes. You know what I'm saying? Day to day things, utility bills, etc property taxes, etc. you still have to live day to day. On top of the fact that you have other bills and responsibilities. So everything can't go to the student loan. On top of the fact that you're not making enough money any damn ways. So again, we're literally set up to be in debt for the rest of our lives for pursuing a college education. Welcome to the USA, the United States of America. Welcome to America ka, ka, with the three Ks. And welcome to late stage capitalism. And this is why I will continue to say, in my opinion, capitalism is slavery with a C. Because again, it's literally designed for many of us to maintain the system and also for many of us to always be poor always be broke, always be in lack, always be in poverty. Because it doesn't really matter how much you work. You have people already working well over 40 hours a week, already with two and three jobs, already got a side hustle, already got a part-time, already got two full-times. You got people robbing Peter to pay Paul, stabbing Paul to pay Mary. Listen, Everybody is penny pinching and trying to figure out how to stretch them bills. And this is capitalism. Um, also, we constantly downplay education in this country. Uh, the USA is very anti-intellectual. Let's just keep it real. You don't like people being educated. You don't like people being informed. You don't. And then what don't make sense is then you have people who've never gone to college who will sit up and downplay people who have gone to college and then tell us that we don't know what we're talking about and we don't know what we're doing and blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, we literally went to school for that particular field, that particular uh, field of study, that particular profession, to be told that we don't know what we're talking about by somebody that never went to college and never went uh, and not only didn't go to college, don't even don't even work in that particular field, don't even work in that profession, but trying to tell you, then you had that shit happening. And then the alcohol part is, the other aspect 
is it by design? They want people to be arguing. Well, I got a degree. You don't. Well, I'm blue collar. Well, you're a white collar. They want us arguing and divided over bullshit. Meanwhile, the blue collar person ain't getting paid their worth. The white collar person ain't getting paid their worth. The person with the degree ain't getting paid right. The person without the degree ain't getting paid right. Okay. The federal minimum wage is still $7.25 an hour since July 2009. By now, our federal minimum wage should be about $23 an hour by now. Arguably $25 an hour by now. Which is still a struggle because people are already making that and struggling. You know why? Because the cost of living is sky high. You keep allowing people to price gouge everybody into poverty. Uh, and it's a bunch of, in, you know, you got the inflation, you got the price gouging, you got corporate greed, you got late stage capitalism. Welcome to hell, folks. And remember, if you're a millennial, if you're a Gen Zer, it's your fault. It is our fault for everything that's ever gone wrong. <clears throat> they blame us for everything. It is absolutely ridiculous when you sit down and think about it. They blame us for the birth rates. They they blame us for the housing situation. People ain't buying enough houses. People ain't having enough kids. People ain't, they don't want to work. They don't want to, um, um, um. we get blamed for everything. Even though most of us have only had power for like 14 years, maybe. 10 years, 5 years, because depending on your age, uh, you haven't been an adult the entire time, so we weren't the ones voting and making all of these disastrous decisions. These were baby boomers by large and a nice sprinkle of Gen Xers who made all of these dumbass decisions that then turned around and screwed over entire generations. Let's just keep it real. Baby boomers literally sowed their children and their children's children and their children's children's children generations out so they could thrive and prosper and left us with nothing. Let's just keep it real, okay? Let's just keep it real. Another reason why college is expensive too, and let's just keep it real, has nothing to do with the education and has everything to do with athletics. A lot of these colleges are astronomically expensive because who else is going to play for the football team? Who's going to pay for the football coach that thinks that they need to be making millions of dollars a year? Who's going to pay for the president and the chancellor who also all feel that they also should be making, you know, half a million or a million dollars a year or more? Again, we're paying because we have to pay a very few people at the top boatloads of money and then all of that's going to get passed on down to who? The damn student who's likely coming from what? Poverty, working poor, working class, or middle class families that cannot afford the college tuition. Hence why your average person going to college has to take out a student loan and will be in student loan debt. But you'll be blamed you'll be blamed for that too right because we also somehow went back in time and decided athletics was going to be more important than higher education so therefore we're going to focus on college football college basketball whatever and pay the coaches who got money we made all of those decisions, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, what have you. And then also, time traveled back into the early 90s to be born. Like, literally, we get blamed for shit that don't even make sense. That's my whole point. Like, we didn't create this. You did. And now you mad at us because we are telling you, Houston, we have a problem. And I said this years ago. If y'all thought the housing crisis of 2007, 2008 was bad... You ain't seen shit. When that student loan bubble bursts, and as you can see, it's about to burst. Let's just keep it real. You really finna see crisis and confusion. 
because more people have student loans than they have homes. There's more student loan borrowers than there are homeowners. So keep that in mind. And yeah, we're going to be in for a shit show if we do not address the problems. Instead of sitting up here blaming folks, how about number one, you pay people a living wage. You pay people their worth. Because arguably, a lot of us should be making six figures or more by now. If I was making 100000 or more, uh, I would be able to pay my student loans off. I would be able to do a lot more things. But no, I make less than what I owe, so how am I ever going to get to that? But then you expect me to stay in these type of field for at least another decade so I can get student loan forgiveness after I've already been paying on my student loans for 10 years. So apparently when you graduate from college, you're also taking out a mortgage, right? Because now it's 20 to 25 years for you to pay off a student loan like you're buying a house. This is ridiculous. And this is another reason why we can't become homeowners because our debt to income is too high. We have more debt than we have income. And most people with student loans, you're not gonna be able to get approved for a mortgage. Newsflash. So again, it's our fault that everything's going wrong even though we're not the ones that made these decisions. We didn't create these policies and legislations and plans. We didn't, we didn't, in 1996, when they decided that NAFTA was gonna be a great idea, I was literally three, about to be four. I didn't have anything to do with that. Again, baby boomer and Gen X, that's who you need to really start looking at. But arguably, the baby boomers, look at them. There's a reason why only one particular generation is doing well and everybody else is screwed over. Look at them. 